Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of The Devil's Lair. Uh, I'm one of your beloved co-hosts, Randy Meadows. And I am the other beloved co-host, Mike <laughs> Tucker. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> you, may, you may not know what the definition of beloved is. Probably don't. Okay. Well, anyways, well, let's jump right in. Mike, we had a, a wonderful uh, showing at the uh, Packer Pen Friday night. We... Uh, we uh, we didn't win the battle, or the but we might have m- moved closer in winning the war. I guess is is maybe the way to put it. But uh, we went in there, lost seventeen fourteen. But boy, we come out swinging. We we was punching and fighting the whole game. So a phenomenal. You, you know, I hate. I'm not the kind of guy that likes a loss any kind right. of way. I'm not a moral victory guy. That's not. I mean, I'm all or nothing type. Good W R L. Yeah, man, but. You got to take something positive out of what we did Friday night. Nobody gave us a chance in that game, except you and I. And that's right. You know, in uh, in the Devil Nation, we we all right. knew we had a chance. So. We, that's right. You know, going into that game, everybody. You know, I've, I've got a lot of folks from Moultrie that you know, of course, last week was saying, you know, it's going to be a blowout. You know, like it was the last couple of years. And you know, I had one told me that it, you know it'd be thirty five nothing at halftime. And you know, the, the way it started. You know, they jumped out 10 nothing quick, and I thought, oh, Lord, you know, they may be right. <laughs> but then, you know, Tiff defense settled down, uh, stepped up, played good ball, and uh, went in half 10-7. Uh, and, and the offense played well uh, during the first half. But, yeah, you know, like you said, it's uh, it was a big crowd there, and I think the kids fed off of that. I know the coaches did later, you know, in the second half of the game. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, you know, it, it's that's one of them games that you can either take as a a learning, a teaching moment and move forward, or it can ruin your season. Uh, and I, I think from talking to the players I've talked to, I think it's going to be, you know, they're going to learn from it. And now they know, because, you know, Moxie was supposed to be the best in this region. And within a few minutes of the ball game, they had them beat. Right. So – yeah, it was a phenomenal game and, you know, really a, a tell of two halves. And, um, you know, we come out the first half and things things went kind of our way. They come did. out the second half, they really kind of went our way. They but did. We just we didn't have enough. And, hey, give credit to Moultrie, man. They are a phenomenal team. And they played great defense and kind of stifled us on offense the second half. So. Yeah, they, that's probably the biggest <clears throat> and fastest defense Titans going to face all year, in my opinion, you know, yeah. from what uh, – all my other buddies around the region has, you know, we've talked, uh, and I felt like that that we competed well with Moultrie. Yeah, uh, yeah, could a few things there at the end that, uh, you know, it, if you're sitting on the Tiff County side, that you know uh, was, was some negatives. But if you're sitting on the other side, wearing the black and yellow, you know, uh, I'm sure they saw it different ways. But all in all. It, it was a great ball game. Most fun I've ever had at a high school football game ever. Yeah, we had a blast. Yeah. Um, there were some unruly Packer fans right beside us, and that's. I don't know. That describes all the Packer fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you said it. I didn't. Hey, I'll take the blame. Call me. <laughs> That'll be fine. Um, the, so they're, they're, you know, I, I do want to clear up one thing. A lot of people are grumbling, and mainly those people from Moultrie are grumbling about us playing dirty and this kind of stuff. And that comes, people are talking on the vent. I don't know if you're familiar with the vent. Yes, I have seen it. Um, And and it just, it drives me crazy to think that, one, that our kids would do something like that. Two, that our coaches would do something like that. And three, you got to be, you got to have a small, closed mind to believe that people just are out to hurt other people on the high school football field. But now we are talking about Moultrie fans, right? Well, you know they're not. going oh, nah. to win those but penalties. Yeah. Or. You know it, it's because I was on the the first field goal they kicked that you know our player, our defensive end, run into him. I mean, I'm sitting right there on the forty yard line where it happened at. It was a penalty. There's no it doubt was. about that. It but was. it wasn't malicious. I do not think you know no way because I mean the kid he laid out for the ball. Yeah, uh, he, you can he tell he, five he, yards. I mean, come his on. intention was to get the ball. You know, and I hate it for the kid because from what uh, I was told Saturday morning, it actually tore his ACL, and mm-hmm. he's done for the year. Yeah, he's out, and, and uh, I hate it for And him. I hate it for him. I That's hate it right. for Moultrie. Uh, you know, even though we're through playing them 
now, you know, they're still from South Georgia. You know, there's only seven teams from South Georgia, in my opinion, that's against the rest of the state of Georgia. You know, because uh, they put all of us, lump us in one region, and we had to beat up on each other and then go face the rest of the state. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I just hate it that they they really – they put blame on that kid, I guess, and, right. and that's not, you know, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, we we don't coach that way. We don't play that way. That's not our mo. Um, there were three plays that were highlighted, and uh, our friends at Plant uh, put a a little piece together and put it on YouTube. Somebody showed it today on the vent, and I, I looked at it, and you know, obviously, I watched the game. Right. I, I saw the 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 kick. I, I thought that was. Legal. The funny thing about it, if you watch the game, previous game against Coffee and Thomasville, anytime they kicked an extra point, we were almost we on was, it. We we're getting close. There. We're getting we close were. to blocking it. So that leads up to this game, and we almost blocked that one too. We Unfortunately, did. we got that kid's leg. Right. It, you know, wasn't intentional. Okay. Then there were two other plays that were deemed dirty by some in our neighboring county, and it just. I didn't see it. I, I really, I didn't. Well, I do know that one of them, and, and it may be what you're finna say, it was where it was on the kickoff when we run it back, maybe to twenty. Yeah. And uh, one of our our kids on on the kickoff, there because only ones that was left to, to stop. I think Stewart was running the ball, if I'm not mistaken. He was, was uh, their punter, and he he dove at him. You know, punters punters are are out there to kick long field goals. In extra points, you know they're not out there hitting kickers. nobody. I mean kickers, and uh, you know he made a valiant effort to to kind of get in the guy's way, and he dove at him. And you know one of our kids did hit him, and got we got a personal foul on it. From what I was told, uh, you know they removed his helmet from him during the game, and told him that uh, he was no longer a blue devil. So if they did that with one kid, you know don't you think if the other one was they thought in their mind was intentional. Right. They'd have done him the same way. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, and I, you know, you talking about on the event. I, I read a thing on AJ on AJC today, and it's a coffee fan. Uh, that's what his his handle was on there, and he was you know warning Camden to be watch or be you know watching out for Tiff County this week uh, because Tiff County plays dirty. You know, so that's that's another county that's that's doing the same thing, and we all know the rivalry between Tiffin and. In coffee, you know, we talked about that last week. Yeah, uh, but come on, you know, it's. I don't think there's anything dirty going on. Uh, it's just football. Uh, That's right. You know, I do know I could talk about some of the stuff coffee has done in the past, but I'm, you know, we'll let let the past be the you past. Know, let the past be the past. We're we'll sleeping dogs lay the high road. That's right. So, um, well, speaking of coffee, the rivalry we have with them, I, I, I'm going to go on record and say that. I've always thought that Colquitt was our biggest rival, and we uh, now, I mean, that rivalry has been uh, restored. I mean, yeah, there's I no so. doubt about it. Um, uh, you know, we we went over there and liked to have beat them. And I think that's in where, their house. In their house, and that's where some of the problem come in. With I think so. Us playing dirty. We didn't play dirty. We we nearly beat you. Right. That's what that's what you're upset about. Right. And if it hadn't been for a questionable. Fourth down call where we stopped. You know, the ball was tipped at the line. And a the back judge in the end zone threw a late flag that, that automatically give them a first down. Yeah. That's when they scored to the go ahead. We, you know, and there again, I'm not crying. Hey, scoreboard said at the end of the game they had 17, we had 14. So my book, we lost. That's right. Uh, but, you know, I, I truly do not believe that, that we – that. Our coaching staff would allow that if they yeah. knew it. Um, I totally agree. Uh, we 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 went over there and and our, our coaches had words with each other of some sort. Yeah. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they said. Um, I have a pretty good idea that that it wasn't real pleasant. And when they did, man, that place was just it oh yeah, was, got both sides woo! fired up. Everybody was pumped. So I've, I have not – I've never been on the road and heard a crowd so loud no, as man. I did um, Friday night. And it made me proud, man. That's what them kids look for. That's right. And, I, you know, I was listening to uh, Chris Beckham's show on the way home. And a guy from Moultrie, he lives in Valdosta, he said, that he called in. 
he said he played football there, and you know he's a true Packer, and he goes back to all the home games. And he said in all the years he's been at uh, that, at the hog pen that he had never heard it that loud. Yeah. Uh, and he said especially from opposing team. So you know the the crowd that Tiffin took down there was loud. You know that crowd that size needs to be doubled this week at the Brody. Uh, we need to be loud, you know, cause uh, them kids feed off of that. Yeah, definitely. We uh, we got Camden coming in this week um, with homecoming game. Homecoming. So hopefully we'll have some uh, waybacks coming in and and enjoying the game. And you know we're expecting a, a, a solid crowd. And if if you can't. You know, please make an effort to be there. A lot going on, and again, this whole the whole reason we started this show is to support the kids, right? And that's you know we've went every week talking about being there for these kids and showing the support for them. And you know, f- obviously, winning and playing well does that for you, right? But you know, it doesn't matter if we're o- over or undefeated. Got to have support for these kids. In order to go where we need to go as a program, so that's right. And the kids, <clears throat> the kids, we will feed off of that. Uh, and you know, it's the more noise you can make, the better it is. That's right. So bring your noise makers that's Friday right. night. Whether that's your wife, I ain't touching that. <laughs> or, or your kid. Yeah, bring your kids. <laughs> bring your kid. Bring your wife and your kids. <laughs> yeah, but you know. I, <laughs> Call them noisemakers if you want to. Your in-laws, your outlaws, your That's right. neighbors. Yeah. Uh, load the car and come. Yeah, come on out. Uh, a lot going on. It's going to be a, a good time had by all. So I do know that on you know Prost does a little show right after the game, mm-hmm. and uh, one of my buddies from Ultra called me yesterday, and he said he you know matter of fact he sat behind us at the game, and he left about three minutes to go, and he told me the whole reason he left was to listen to the pro show. And he said on there, he said, look, folks, he said, uh, that Titson team we just played, he said that, that we will see them again in the playoffs. Or we quite possibly could see them again in the playoffs, but they'll definitely be in the playoffs. They are, they are definitely the most improved team from last year, which we already knew that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and pros, you know, these folks don't like him for different reasons, but he is a heck of a ball coach. Oh, yeah, you know, give him he, credit. Uh, he can fire up his kids, uh, and he can motivate, and, you know, he can win. Um, observations I've made over the years, just being around Rush Probes and that kind of stuff, um, could, could play a factor in any game, not just ours, and I think it played a factor in our game, uh, is when they're, when they're an official's on his sideline, he barks, they listen. Right. And what I mean is there were a few late flags that come, that, from, that that come from that side that had, if he had not been chirping in their ear, I right. don't know they would have been thrown. Right. One is the pass interference call late that really had a, a, a huge him a first outcome down. of the game. It gave him a first down, right? And then they, they eventually scored like two or three plays later. Yep. And the other one would be that questionable hit. It, it was, I'm not going to call it late because it happened in a split second. Um. As a matter of fact, somebody showed me the film, and I, I didn't. I thought yeah, the penalty. Yeah. I thought the penalty was on the Calkwood kid, um, and I was like, "Oh my, really?" That's so they called us for right. a late hit, and I looked at the film, and I was like, "Okay, well, maybe, you know, in slow motion, I can, but in real time, there's no way. Right. There's no way. So that had to have come from the sideline, and it happens whether you like it or not. Uh, it does. It does. I mean. Uh, whether you're, I mean, I've officiated sports since I was 15, and every now and then, calling baseball, you you give them, well, there's a makeup strike. That's right. I've been behind the plate and froze, and then they, I'll tell the catcher, get one close, I'm calling it a strike. Yeah. And, and so. Well, I, I wouldn't admit that, but, but go well, ahead. I, I did. Look, I don't call just, baseball just, and softball no more. Okay. I'm long done with that. Okay. So, and it's a good, good thing I, I have. So. Anyways, but it was a great game over in uh, Moultrie, man. It was. And, and I wish I could go back and watch it again. And just and, Yeah, me too. It's, uh, but one thing that impressed me, which I, Moultrie is not the easiest place to get out of. <laughs> no. And, uh, but, you know, after the game, you know, I noticed all the coaches took the kids in the, well, I guess down to about the 30 on the south end of the field. But they was, they was some folks trying to foul out. But for the majority of the Titan folks, uh, they stood. They stayed. 
And, you know, them kids, you know, they was cheering for them, clapping for them. Um, and that, you know, the, the kids can, can tell that, that the devil's nation is behind them. The folks of Tiff County is behind them. Uh, and that's what we need to do for the rest of the year. Shoot, yeah. So, um, well, let's uh, let's recap the rest of the region. You want to do that while we're here? Is there anybody else that played? It? Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <We can. laughs> Nobody of real importance, I don't guess. Um, who did Camden play last week? They were off, weren't they? Mm, no, they played. No, coffee. they played. Went to yeah. They, coffee they County went to Coffee County and lost. 20, no, um, no, they won twenty eight. Scored seventeen seconds left in the ball game. Yeah, that's crazy. Did you read anything on that? I did. Who cares? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm worried that this week we're going to go in and you know because everybody's played Camden pretty tough that we're going to be overconfident going in. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, but. That's where your coaching is going to come in. <coughs> you know, they, they can keep them boys focused. And, uh, you know, now they know it's going to be a dog fight and they're in every dog fight for the rest of the way. Uh, you know, I, I hope they don't look ahead. I uh, think they've got that one just because, you know, like you said, Coffee played them tight last week. We've already beat Coffee. And, uh, you know, they beat Valosta with a late touchdown. So, I mean, they still going to have the work cut out. Yeah, I know. We got Camden, Valdosta, and then Lowndes at, at, uh, on the road. Mm -hmm. Valdosta's on the road, too. Mm -hmm. Then we get the Pirates. Arg. So, um, big game this week, man. Big game. Huge game. Um, we'll go through Coffee's schedule. They played Camden loss last week. Uh, they get Brunswick this week. Mm -hmm. Lowndes at home next week. And then, no, Lowndes at home this week against Valdosta playing the Winterville Classic. No, they get Brunswick. Then they coffee gets Lance oh, okay. the following week. I'm, I'm just going through coffee. the rest of their schedule. Okay. Um, their schedule is Brunswick, Lance, Cockwood, Valdosta. Okay. They got a tough road ahead. They do. Um, Being only down, only right two in the yeah. region. It, it's just going to be tough. And thank goodness we beat them. Um, that gives us a leg up. Okay. So, and then the next wild card is going to be Brunswick. I mean, how do I mean? I, man, who knows what they're going to do? Yeah, you you know you don't know if they're that improved <clears> or. They lost thirty to thirty eight to uh, Lowndes this yeah. week, and Lowndes had to score late in that ball game. Yes, they did, so. and uh, they get coffee. Obviously, then they have Colquitt, Camden, Valdosta, and Tift. Right, and it could come down to that last game of the year. It could. I mean, really, hopefully it won't. I don't. I feel like it won't, but it could. So, um, we get to Valdosta Wildcats. Who do they got this week? Oh, yeah, the Wintersville. Wintersville Classic in Lounds. In Lounds, the Concrete Palace. Um, we'll have that game later on in, yeah. our, in our pick section that we've created. So, um, Lound, they got Valdosta has got Lounds, Tift, Colquitt, Brunswick, Coffee. Mm -hmm. So, they got a full slate of games. Okay. So, obviously, they control their own destiny. I agree. We went over Tift County. This y'all pad, just like y'all pad. So you borrow my pen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. They got Valdosta, Coffee, Tift, and Camden. So they got four games left. Let's see, Valdosta, mm, Coffee, mm, Tift. Mm. I don't boy. I don't. Who do you pick? Who's gonna win the region? I mean, I can't look at the schedules and just – is, well, is there a clear-cut favorite? I don't know. The Moultrie's a clear-cut favorite. I, I don't either. I mean, uh, you know, Valosta has always played Moultrie very tough. They still got them left on the schedule. Camden has always played Valosta tough. I mean, played Moultrie tough. So, I mean, it, anything – you know, even though Tifton lost Friday night, they still got a shot, outside shot of oh, yeah. winning the region. I mean – well, here's Moultrie's schedule. Okay, let's look at it. Uh, they got Brunswick, right? Valdosta, Coffee, Camden. They play Valdosta at Valdosta's Valdosta, right? Oh, is Valdosta's home. home. They got Coffee and Camden on the road. Okay, 
So no one probes. He'll go to coffee two days early and Camden a week early yeah. to get ready. He'll probably leave just Friday night after they get done the coffee and just ease on down to knowing him. But uh, it's going to, man, it's just going to, there's just so many scenarios that if you can't get pumped about 1-6-A football, man, yeah. you just need to watch women's basketball or something. Nah. Oh, if you can't a, get excited about high school football, yeah, that's, that's something wrong with you. You need to go to the doctor and get checked out. Yeah, you need to play chess. That's yeah. what you need to do. So, well, in the region, that's Colquitt at first with 2-0, and o, Camden 2-0. and o. Lowndes and Tiff both at 1-1, one and one. Mm-hmm. Valdosta and Brunswick 0-1, and, and Coffee 0-2. 0-2. Oh, yep, so a lot left to go still. So what else? What you want to talk about there, Mike? Um. Let's we, we'll finish we with, Yeah, we'll finish, finish with, with that. that. Okay. Uh, I do know uh, Barron County's quarterback. I know I talk a lot about them. I got some friends down there. But uh, the quarterback, Blake Guthrie, got knocked out early in the game. Knocked out of the game, not knocked out concussion-wise. But he did leave the game and actually went to the hospital. Uh, I talked to a buddy of mine today. He has not practiced since the game. Uh He's got, I believe that he told me he had some, uh, possibly some rib trouble. Uh, so, you know, we want to keep them, especially that kid. He's he's a sophomore, uh, comes from a good family. What's his name? Blake Guthrie. Um, and, you know, he uh, the backup come in, from what I understand, and the only touchdown Barry scored, he's the one let them down and scored. Uh, but, you know, let's keep keep the Rebel Nation in, in your thoughts and prayers. Uh Certainly. You know, because you, you hate, you know, like the kid from Moultrie, you hate to see anybody get hurt. I mean, it's one of them things that you play football, you're going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get hurt. That's right. That's but. right. Well, real quick, Mike, I, I just want to touch on uh, Lady Devil softball. Uh, the playoffs start Wednesday. They do. Um, we don't know who they're going to play yet. They're going to be the number two seed out of this region with a record of 24-3. and three. Uh, last weekend, they beat Camden County to to seal the number two spot. Um, they they did honor their seniors Saturday at the game. They did. Um, I just want to mention those seniors. They, they were uh, Allison Walker, Taylor Simmons, Courtney Waldrop, Chelsea Thomas, Brianna Wiggins, and Morgan Garrick. So congratulations to those Lady Devils. They are uh, finishing up their high school softball careers. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll all go on to do phenomenal things I would agree. afterwards. And I, I so. sat beside uh, Pee Wee Waldrop, which he's got a, a senior on there. Yeah. And uh, he said against, I think it was Vidasta, <coughs> that uh, beat them one to nothing both games. He said, we just couldn't catch a break. He said, we hit the ball hard, but it was right at somebody. And, you know, they – that was the difference. If they had a split with Valdosta, you know, they would have been region champs, but hey, it wasn't in the cards. Yeah, I think it was Lowndes. Was it Lowndes? Yeah, Lowndes ended up winning region. Okay. I knew it was one of them. Yeah, so they'll play They'll play um, next week. Should be Wednesday. I don't know what time the start time is or anything. That's we, not next, following Wednesday. A week from tomorrow. Right. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. Yeah, a week from tomorrow. So they'll be out there uh, at the. At least first round, they'll be at home. That's right. Hopefully more, but uh, may have some big things coming from out there. We'll, uh, we'll announce on our, face, our Facebook page, Twitter, and uh, our website. So keep looking for that. Um, but I just I, I just want to let everybody know they are playing, and it's playoff times for them. And I feel certain their fate's going to be a lot better than the Atlanta Braves. So, yeah. Two words of advice. Don't eat yellow snow. Don't bet on the Braves in the playoff. That's life lessons right there. I can give that's right. anytime. That's that's what my, my message is. So And the Dirty Birds neither. Yeah. You know. Oh. They were terrible, weren't they? Must be a Atlanta thing. I guess. I hope that uh that bad fortune stays in Atlanta, doesn't move east over to Athens, because they got a big one this weekend. Everybody's dinged up and um it's just gonna be just a crazy, crazy weekend if, if yeah, something they, bad they, happens. They may be a few kids that uh, hadn't seen the field going to be on the field this weekend. Yeah, no doubt. So that was a tough game. But anyways, we're here to talk high school football. That's right. So anyways, um, well, last week we started a uh, a new segment. I figured you'd want to bring that up. 
And uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and brag. You, you, got, you know. <laughs> Look, I mean, I am a seasoned veteran at doing this. Okay. And we uh, we started a new uh, a new segment, and it's just the it's, I have, we haven't named a segment, so let's come up with a name. Uh, our listeners and viewers be glad to be feel free to send us a That's right. a name of this segment, and we'll uh, we'll use it with your permission. So. Uh, but for right now, we're going to call it the uh, Show Enough Big Boy Top Ten. Because we some Show Enough Big Boys. We are that. And uh, basically, we take the top ten games, and we we predict on who's going to win them. And we're keeping up with our records. So, what was Go ahead. Your- <laughs> you was seven and three last week. Go ahead. Yeah, me and Donovan come in at five and five. I, I, I was uh, and I don't a disappointing know seven and three. And I don't know a doggone thing about football, so apparently yeah. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went a dismal seven and three last week, and I mean I just had a few games let me down. Uh, Peachtree Ridge being the biggest one, they should have beat Collins Hill, but but you know I, I seen the what's funny <coughs> about that game. Uh, Collins Hill beats them, but yet Peachtree Ridge is still a right higher than them in the AJC top ten. I mean, how crazy is that? I know, man. You know, so that tells you right there that it's it, it, their poles. They can take them and you know and shove them. And shove so, them. so I'm the uh, you the leader this week. I'm the Shoney's big boy holding up the the sandwich, the the hamburger right there. Can and I after, get a hamburger? And after I man, I need with a fries. Yeah. I, and after next week, I'll be holding two hamburgers up. So. You um, won't never hold up two hamburgers, <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> You'll never make it up. I won't get that far. <laughs> All right. So, well, let's go over this week's games. Okay. I don't even – I got. I know a couple of games going on. But, oh, really? You're trying to throw some wrinkles in No, nah, I just <laughs> went around the region. I mean, they just <laughs> – Ali. They, you know, oh, definitely right. our three region games in there, and I picked one <laughs> – one that's out of uh, five, eight, uh, number one, number two in the polls is playing each other. And Okay. Well, one thing I noticed is there's definitely some interesting names. Well, that's the reason I put them on there for you. I figured that <laughs> might well help with your picks. You know. Well, let's 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 go through them. Uh, the first game we got picked is the uh, Thomasville Bulldogs at the Berrien County Rebels. Would you like to take off, Mr. Leader? I will start things in winning fashion. I'm going Thomasville Bulldogs. Any particular reason, or the Bulldogs will not fail me. Okay, they like to fail you Saturday. Oh, that's but a different they Bulldog. But they did. Well, I'm actually going to agree with you on that one. Uh, I think the Bulldogs will take care of Barry because they are banged up. Donovan. Well, you know me. I do know you. I like to consider myself a rebel, <laughs> so I'm going to have to go with uh, Barry and County Rebels. I love it. It's a good pick. <laughs> no rhyme, no reason. Yeah, see, last week I went with my heart with, with Barry and then uh, <clears throat> so okay. this, this week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do an educated guess. Game two, Cairo Syrup Makers at Worth County Rams. Now this, this is this is going to be close. Most people automatically will circle Cairo. Right. Because they've just had a good, their history, their storied career the last seven, eight years. I think I, think I looked at their record, I want to think they're... Maybe two and three on the season. Yeah, they are. They're, I think Worth County is too. And Worth County is too. Um, I got to go K Row. I can't go against them. I saw Tiff County go over there and make Worth County just look ridiculous. Do you reckon Worth County had the sprinklers come on again? <laughs> they might. You know, try to slow down the circle because I'm picking. I'm picking K Row also. I've I've got to. I don't um, want to. I think Worth has a chance in that game, but I've got to pick K Row. Donovan? I got K Row too. I mean, I love pancakes. <laughs> Absolutely adore pancakes with a little side of sausage, especially with K Row syrup. So I got to go with K Row syrup makers. All right. I'm digging it. Yay. Game three America Sumter Panthers at Monroe Tornadoes. Would you like me to go first? That way it don't look like I'm copying you. All yeah, now. go ahead. Uh, this one was kind of a toss-up for me. Uh, but, I, I mean, I picked the Panthers to uh, to knock off the Tornadoes. Uh, Have you looked at their record, Americas? No. 
I'm going. I'm going Monroe. Okay. This might be for their region title. This it may might, be. This may, it may determine be. the outcome. Um, I'm taking Monroe. Uh, it's over at Hugh Mill Stadium, and the football might not be good, but the band always is. You're so right. now both of them will have a good band. Yep. So I'm gonna. I'm taking Monroe. Tornadoes. Tornadoes. Donovan. Well, I'm going to have to go with simply for this reason. Tornadoes are very closely linked to hurricanes, right? <laughs> yeah. And since well. I, you know, was raised a purple hurricane, I got to go with tornadoes. So, Monroe tornadoes. No other reason. Sounds good. Donovan takes the tornadoes. All right. Pinewood Christian at Tift Area Panthers. I think this is going to be a good game. I think it is, too. Um, I'm going to give some love to Tift area, though. They're yeah. playing well this year. My buddy Ryan Branch has got things going um, in the right direction. Their AD, Mike Patrick's old buddy of mine. We uh, we go way back. Uh, they Good good folks out there. and we I think Tift area is going to get it done this week. I went with Tift area also. Uh, for, you know, for, you know, I know Ryan's got them boys playing well. Uh, I did look at their records. I think both of them was like five and no four and two. Uh, I don't really know that much about Pinewood, uh, but I you know got to go with hometown boys. We hadn't given them any love this year, so that's the reason I threw that game on there. That's awesome. I like it. Don't the Christians usually get eaten by the lions? <laughs> so. In their arena or what? Yeah. Okay. Well, I I guess logically then I got to go with the Panthers. They're, you know, close enough. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> oh, my. He's killing me. He bro. is. All, All right. He's better this week than he was last week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don't worry. It gets worse. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Brooks County at Fitzgerald Purple Hurricanes. I, I took Cook last week, and that bit me in yeah. the behind. Um, the Hurricanes are playing well. But so are the Trojans. They got a kid going D1 playing quarterback for them. I'm taking Brooks County just because that kid's going to be the difference in that ball game. Well, I noticed, noticed you eyeing my paper since I've already got all mine <laughs> circled a while ago. <laughs> Whatever. So, trying to keep your <laughs> look your two game lead. But uh, I, I picked Trojans, Brooks County Trojans also. Uh, Fitzgerald, you know, they've, they've lost one, tied one. Uh, Brooks County has been on a roll. I think they lost their very first game in the year. I think they've won everyone possibly since then. I think Valdosta beat them. Yeah. That might be their only loss. Yeah. So, I I did too. I I picked the Trojans. Well, personally, I've never liked Trojans. Ever in my life. So, that's number one. Number two, I was born and bred in Fitzgerald, so i got to go with the Purple Hurricanes. (laughs) Oh, my... (laughs) I hope my mother's not watching. Hey, look at here. Here's your cook high hornets back again <laughs> against the Pelham Hornets. So I'm uh, through. Look, Cook County, that's ADL, baby. I don't, I'm, I'm out. You're out of Cook County? I'm out. No more Cook County for me. Okay. No, I'm taking them. They ain't going to be, they're, they're going to be the <laughs> yeah. mess out of Pelham. <laughs> them, them Hornets are going to get stung. <laughs> they gonna sting. I, I pick Cook County also. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you pick the Hornets, you will yeah, not you go will wrong. Win. I mean, I had to go any, mini, miny, mo on here. I mean, okay. it's Hornets versus Hornets. Hornets, yeah. So, let's see. We go with a Pelham or we go with a Hornet that's high. Okay, I'll go with Cook High. <laughs> oh, my. Okay, now we're getting out of my, my comfort zone a little bit. Mine too, but, I, you know, I, I saw this, <laughs> this little thing here. In the- you got the Stevenson Jaguars at the Tucker Panthers. Uh, both have really solid programs. Right, they're number one and number two respectively in five A. Yeah, Which one, who's number anything? one? Tucker. Tucker is number one. Yeah. Hey, Tucker's always number one, baby. <laughs> Go ahead. Must be a typo. Well, for that reason <laughs> alone, is. for that reason alone, I'm taking Stevenson because okay. Tuckers are losers. Okay, we'll see. You know, uh, it's hard for me to pick Stevenson because uh, I remember. Few years back, we went up there to the playoff game. They beat Tiff County six to three, and then they come down here to Brody and uh, Mike Davis. that's running wild for South Carolina now. Uh, he run over Tiff County 
or run, had a, had a good night. I ain't going to say you run over them. But I'm still going against them. And, you know, Tucker, Tucker go, ain't going to let me down. I'm going with the Tucker Panthers. Mm. Well, if only one good thing can be said about it, maybe there will be a Tucker that is finally a winner. Finally number one. Hey, yeah. you know. All right, Donovan. Well, I kind of looked at this and I studied it and I said, <laughs> well, I got to bet on at least one of the co-hosts. So I'll go with uh, Tucker Panthers. I figured he was going to jump ship and go with you. <laughs> mm. All right. Now we're getting into region play. Region play. My time to shine. Brunswick Pirates at Coffee Trojans. You go first. That, I don't ought, know. that ought to be. A, do we want to let Donovan go first? Let's let Donovan go first because I'm still pondering over mine. I make my decisions on the run here. <clears throat> Well, all I can say is, <laughs> he's he's taking... we're going with Brunswick Pirates. What you got? Well, since he took half my back last game, you know, I'm going with him too. I, you know, Brunswick's going to get their first win Friday night at, in Coffee County. No way. Coffee County will go 0 and 3 Friday <sighs> night. They're going to have for sale signs up in Robert Pruitt's yard if they go 0 and 3 and lose to Brunswick. Well, maybe after they go on three, then next week that coffee fan will be talking about how dirty Brunswick is. Maybe. So that's the only reason I'm picking against coffee. I can't do it. Okay. I you, can't. Do you think they're going to get their first region win? Coffee's a good team. They are. They look good. They they played well. They played well enough to win that ball game, but they didn't. Um, so I think this week they finally get the monkey off their back, and I'm going coffee. The monkey or the pirates? The pirate monkey. Oh, okay. Arg. So, all right. <clears throat> Game number nine, we got Valdosta the Wildcats at the Lowndes County Vikings. At the Concrete Palace. <clears throat> Concrete Palace. Wintersville Classic. No ESPN. No nothing this year. But I'm taking Valdosta. <clears throat> but this is one of these games that Lowndes can mess around and win. Yeah. I mean, they don't rule them out. Um, I, you know, just because it's known their past few weeks, they have they've, they've got their issues. They've had their their struggles and issues. Um, now, if somebody had a gun to my head and said, Randy, you got to drop $1,000 on one of these teams, I'm, I'm going to take Valdosta. But, which I'm taking them anyways. I ain't yeah. no money, but I'm taking them. They just, it just makes sense. But, man, they could come back and they could really win this game. There's no doubt in my mind. They could. They could. Lowndes could win it since they're playing at home. You know, it, Lowndes, the Concrete Palace, is a tough place to go into and play. They are the Vikings. But, you know, I remember a couple years ago when the ESPN went down there and it was supposed to be the game of the week and Lowndes rolled up. How many points? It was, it was all one-sided. But I think Vados Wildcats will get some revenge this Friday night, and they will be the the winner of the Wintersville Classic. Yeah, Donovan. <clears throat> Are you, he's, he's choked di- up. He, he's digging I, for a quarter. <laughs> no, I love Norse mythology. What? Thor, like Thor, Norse, yeah, Thor, Norse. You know the Vikings, and you know, and a Viking. I mean, you know, they're huge usually, and they will kick the crap out of a wildcat. Probably, you know, flay him out, take his fur, use it as a as a cloak. So, I'm I'm gonna have to go with the Vikings. You do realize these are high school kids on this football field, right? It's not really Vikings versus a wildcat. Are you sure? <laughs> No, no, sometimes I'm not. <laughs> okay, so you're taking the Vikings. Yes. <clears throat> there you have it, Vikings for Donovan. All right, big game of the week, Camden Wildcats at the Tiff County Blue Devils. We t- we, we've talked. How do you go against the Devils? I'm going to get run out of Tiff County by doing this, Mike. I can't. You go, you go, you go. Let me think over it. Well, we got the the code leader <laughs> in Region One Six A in Camden coming into the much improved One One Blue Devils. You know, I'm not just saying that because I'm from Tiff County. Uh, 
you know, I truly believe Tipton will win this ball game for the simple fact we're going to run everything on our side of the field. That way we'll get the officials in our, in our back pocket so that we'll be throwing the flags, you know. No, that was a little shot at Moultrie, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it no, I, I truly believe that uh, Tiff County will go to 2-1 and one Friday night at the Brody. Donovan? Well, I much prefer my my devils being red, specifically in high heel stilettos. So I've got to go with the Wildcats. Oh, okay. <laughs> Killing me. Are you I can't, okay? I can't follow that. <laughs> I can't try to. Oh my! That's you pressure. Had to go first. I, sh- I should have went first. So, all right, big game. Camden comes in. A lot of history in that program. Tiff County has some tradition. I wouldn't necessarily call it history. We got tradition in our program. Um, we are playing at a, a higher level than we have in the past. Camden's playing basically at the same level. Um, it, it may be enough to win this week. It might be. But who am I kidding? I'm taking Tiff County. I knew I was the whole time. So I'll go eight and two this week, probably nine and one, maybe ten and oh, I don't know. And I'll be way ahead of you bums and I won't even have to worry about picking the rest of the year. So That's fine. we'll pick for you next week. <laughs> so I'm taking Tiff County. Are you sure? And I forgot my devil horns. I'm not there in the truck. No, they there. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't awesome. see. Them. Awesome. So so that's our picks for the week. Um if we left out a game or something like that, let us know. Be glad to. Uh, oh, if you want to nominate a game, yeah, for us to pick. We have uh, social media out there. Uh, search our Facebook page at uh, Tiff County Devils Lair. Um, our uh, Twitter handle is Devils Lair One. TC Devils Lair One. No, just Devils Lair One. <laughs> I got too much too much going on with Tiff County right now. Uh, Devils Lair One, and. Uh, Tweet us throughout the show. A big shout out to Coach Kirk. He uh, he sent us a, a tweet here just a little bit ago. So um, I know they're getting ready for baseball. Hey, right? I actually had a meeting today with the, with the kids. Uh, you know he he wants to set a good example for the boys. Uh, and he holds the boys to a uh, higher standard. You know he uh, they had jog for Jake this past weekend, and he had the. Uh, Freshman and sophomore went up and set up actually for the race, and then the juniors and seniors was required to come in and work the race. Uh, so I mean, he, he's real big on community, uh, getting your kids involved. Uh, you know, not only teaching them baseball, but I feel like he, him, and uh, his staff is teaching them, you know, about life. So you know, it's you can set a good example there or a bad example. And oh, I, yeah, I think definitely. I think our baseball program is in the right direction too. Yeah, definitely, I agree, man. Um, there's a a lot of good things going on in that baseball program that you know people like that. I mean, people don't people don't know about that, right? Um, they, but you know, they probably don't even do it for the recognition. I'm sure no, they don't. No. They do it to be good people, and that's really what it's about. It so, is. Um, but at the same time, kids need to understand that a pat on the back is okay sometimes too. Or kick in the butt's okay. And, but, the, but that's right. And the flip side of it is you can always get kicked in the butt. Right. My daddy used to do it to me out in public. If I did something stupid, he'd just kick me. My daddy and, still does it to me. Yeah, well, I, mean, I can imagine. A bunch of it to kick. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we, <laughs> we, uh, we, we appreciate Coach Kirk's effort and his staff and, and that family that is the baseball community. You know, we're all under one big umbrella, that's right. which is Tiff County. And uh, so thanks to them, and, and that's to all the sports, man. We uh, Things are rolling. The seasons, are, you know, we're prepared now for the uh, fall. I mean, the winter sports pretty soon. Winter's going to be spring, and then that's right. we're going to be on hiatus for the summer. And it's just a couple of weeks, wrestlers start conditioning. Yeah. Conditioning next week. Get on week. the mat. Is it next week? Yeah. I guess it is. Conditioning next week. And then get on the mat end of October. Yep, the 28th. Oh. Speaking of wrestling, uh, please sign up for our golf tournament on the 26th of this month. Um, it'll be at the Golf Club of South Georgia. One o'clock start. It's 125 per man. Uh, remember, this is a fundraiser. 
trying to raise money for these kids and uh, great help. prizes. Yeah, great prizes, uh, good fun, and and a lot of golf. Might even uh, be a little bit of food there, isn't it? Oh, I can imagine with with me and you there. I, I can guarantee there's gonna be some food. There's gonna be some good eats going on for sure. So um, find somebody if you're if you're a single person, register. We'll find two people to put with you. Um, and you know we we need sponsorship. So all that's available on the website tcfallbrawl.com. www.tcfallbrawl b r a w l dot com. Uh, sign up, uh, join, join this cause. Uh, wrestling does not get a lot of love, no. but we're going to make love for them. So, whoa, that came out wrong. <laughs> we're going to we're going to make <laughs> we're going to show them we're going to show them some love and make it happen. Help them help them get where they need to be. So, and also Friday night, somebody at home at halftime will win the Yeti cooler that we have been raffling off. So if you ha- don't have your ticket, it's five bucks for. A- for one ticket, or you can get five for twenty. You can see uh, we have a booth set up uh, underneath, underneath the stadium. Underneath the stadium, uh, please buy your tickets there. It's going for a good cause. These kids work hard, and uh, you know all the money will be spent on the kids. Uh, you know it's not going to to pay any coaches or anything like that. Uh, but what money we raise, one hundred percent, will go to the student singlets, athletes. Singlets, warm ups, that type of stuff. That's right. So, singlets, warm ups, camps. Uh, Avenues for these kids to be seen in college because right. we lose sight of that sometimes. We need to help these kids find colleges to get into. Right. There's tons of scholarships out there, so um, we've got to let these kids be seen. So camps and that kind of stuff and showcase events really help that cause. So right. please, please help that that uh, cause. And if you have a cause that you're trying to uh, to to get out, please let us know. We'll get it out on the air and. Uh, we appreciate everybody's support, whether it's on the show, but especially with student athletes. So, don't forget the uh, player spotlight. Once, oh. once we wrap this show, we're we're going to have the uh, player spotlight. I forgot about like yeah, Suggs. and uh, at the end of tonight's segment, we're going to have a player spotlight, which is uh, Blake Suggs. Um, we uh, we interviewed him over the weekend, and by we, I mean Mike. So uh, we we uh, you know. Uh, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention anything about it. And uh, I think I think Blake done well in his interview. Uh, he told his dad told me he come with him, and he said, "Look, you know, Blake ain't gonna talk much." <laughs> and uh, actually, I think you know, first time I've ever interviewed anybody. Yeah. Uh, so I think I was a little more nervous than Blake was. But you know, I told Blake he was done great. Uh, but stay tuned for that interview because there's some stuff that you know he's. Blake's one of the guards, you know, one of the big uglies that they call them. Uh, you know, most of the time, the only time you hear anything about offensive linemen is when they don't block. Yeah. You know, miss a miss a miss a blocking assignment. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Blake's got some stuff that that'll come out in the interview that you know, when he is finished being a devil, that you know he's he's gonna go on and play ball at the next level. He already knows where he's going. Uh, so I mean, it, it's a good interview. Yeah, definitely. Stay tuned for that. And uh, again, we appreciate everybody's support. Before you leave, I got kicked in the butt last week because I didn't mention this. Uh, one thing we we started <laughs> at the coffee game, uh, the little group I sat with. Uh, anytime Tiff County moves the ball, it's the first down. Once the PA announcer announces it, we want to be up on our feet hollering, go blue. You know, it, it would be great if we could get everybody – on the home side, and half the ones that's going to be on the visitor side that's wearing the navy. Yeah. Uh, to you know, do that. You know, it, it's kind of like uh, that team from Alabama. Uh, that you know that, that they do something similar to that. It, that's. But we want to holler after the first down. We want to holler, "Go blue." So they think say, you remember that? It's two they're, words. They're going to say, "Hey." Uh, they're going to say, "Your Tiff County Blue Devils has a first down," and you're going to say, "Roll Tide." Okay, that's close enough. No, that's not. I'm off. You're way off. Which we knew that before. Go blue. Go blue. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in if you're in. Hey, I was in the last two weeks. I was in. <laughs> all in. So, all right, guys. We're going to roll on out of here. We'll see you next week. Um, just in case you missed it, this will be the winning picks. For, Probably will be. For next week. Because uh, he, he brings a different sheet back. So <laughs> that may be why he won. <laughs> Go see your local bookie. <laughs> Load up on these two. Oh, so till next time, I'm Randy Meadows. And I'm Mike Tucker. Fear the pitchfork. Go Big Blue.
This is Mike Tucker with the Devil's Lear. This week's player spotlight, we have Mr. Blake Suggs with us. Blake, welcome. Thank you. Blake is offensive lineman, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, tell us what grade? What grade are you in? I'm a senior. You're a senior. Yes, sir. Uh, of course, I said you off. Your guard, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, how long have you been playing football? Since I'm about seven years old. Seven years old. Yes, sir. So, uh, what does it mean to be a Blue Devil? Well, you know, when you're playing rec ball through those years, you just grow up watching the guys ahead of you play for the Blue Devils, and it's always been a dream play for Tiff County. Yeah. Good. Uh, last year had a little rough season. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, new coach, learn, totally different scheme from what you was used to with the previous coach. Uh, so tell us, is it being offensive lineman, you know, most of the time you guys don't get the glory. You know, the only time they talk about the offensive lineman is when you don't block. Yes, sir. So – what what makes Blake want to be offensive lineman? Well, not everybody's born fast. So, you know, you just got to play what your abilities allow you to play. And offense line is rewarding. I mean, you know, when you see those guys break through and take it to the house, you know, that's you, know, that's you uh, making plays like that happen. But, again, on the other hand, you get a lot of the blame too. So, you know, I enjoy it We're personally. Good. And you're right. Everybody, uh, you know, is not built with, you know, four point oh speed. Uh, you got to have the guys in the trenches fighting. You know, uh, every every down, every snap. Uh, so, would you have you ever played defense or? Uh, I played a little bit back in rec ball, but once I got to middle school, I just played offense played line strictly offense line all the way through. We're good. Uh, went down Friday night to the hog pen. Yes, sir. Uh, Give us your thoughts about the game. Going in, you know, they were having their 100-year celebration. Yeah. We knew they were going to be pumped. You know, it was going to be a packed house, and they were going to be ready to go. But we knew we were a different football team than last year. And, you know, winning a region game already this year, we had confidence going into this game. And we knew if we went out there and played the way we knew how, we could beat them. You know, we had some controversial calls. But we were in the game the whole time. And, you know, just there at the end, they scored. And, Barely beat us, so you know. Yeah, you know they uh, they jumped out quick to a ten nothing lead, and uh, you know I, as a fan, I'm sitting in the stands, I'm thinking, oh go, you know, here we go, because you know I knew going down there, me and Randy had talked about the game earlier in the week, and you know if I knew if you went down there from watching the coffee game, uh, if you guys went down there and played ball, I felt like you could play with them. Uh, then they you know hit the little quick slant across the middle, and the kid run, I don't know. 80 something yards for a touchdown and yes, then, then they got the field goal and I'm thinking uh you know we might be in trouble you know but then the defense stepped up and uh you know offense finally scored you know so going in uh halftime I believe it was 10-7 yes sir 10-7 and uh you know uh then you come out and we finally score yes, you know sir. because of some efforts y'all had yes sir offensive line uh so we went up 14-10. What was your thoughts then? Well, after J-Rock picked up that fumble and took it to the house, I felt a big momentum shift there. And, uh, you know, time it was pretty late in the fourth, it I believe, it when was. it happened. And I knew the way our defense was playing. We had a good shot to win the game. And uh, we had a couple controversial calls there, I right agree. there at the end, that uh, played a big part in giving us the ball back. And, you know, that shifts momentum there, too. That's right. And, uh, you know, Cockwell, they've always had a good offense with Coach Prost down there. And, you know, they just got the better of us right there at the end. That's right. I don't think they was a better team on Friday. Yes, sir. I think the breaks went their way. Uh, you know, that game, I, you know, because I've got a lot of multi friends. And, you know, the, the comments I was hearing that they would be up 35, you know, 42, nothing at halftime. And, uh you know, now the all proof Friday night that y'all can play with anybody in the state. Yes, sir. Uh, so, you know, it, it was a good ball game. It's a tough loss, but still, I don't think it – how do you think that loss Friday night, for, you want to one in the region right now. Uh, so what what are you, your outlook on the rest of the region games? You got four more games in the region left. After playing Cockwood as tough as we did, you know, we still lost. You're unhappy with that. But 
it was a big confidence booster because they're one of the best teams in the state, and we know we could play with anybody. That's right. And uh, we just have a lot of confidence going these last four games. And I, you know, I, I can go ahead and say it now on air. Uh, I believe you'll win the next four, no problem. I do too. Uh, I just, I, I think the the difference in this year's team and last year's team is y'all believe. You know, I think Coach Reed has done a good job with y'all. Uh, but a spotlight for you, let's back up a week or so. You know, uh, coffee game, first region win, is, I think, since 2010. Yes, sir. Uh, less than a minute to go. You know, everybody knows scores 32 29. Everybody knows what's coming. Coffee just scored. Uh, and I look out there, and there's two offensive linemen going. And, and, I, and I admit, I turn around and ask, why are we sending two offensive linemen out there? But I didn't realize Mr. Blake was one of them. Yes, sir. So when you went out there, what was your thoughts? Was you hoping he would kick the ball to you? or That's kind of our plan. They put me out there. Nobody knows I'm a baseball player. Exactly. And uh, they see me, an offensive lineman, they think, well, you know, that's a gimmick right there. So they're going to kick it to me. And, you know, that's what I'm looking for. So, I mean, that's just like a ground ball to me. That's right. And, folks, not only did you recover one, but they was stupid enough to do it twice. Yes, you, sir. You recovered both of them. I know your dad was uh, – I seen him right after the game. You know, he was going down the steps talking about, yeah, kick it 56 again. Yes, sir. You know. Uh, but you, you did mention that you was a baseball player. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I've been playing baseball just as long as I have football all the way through. Uh you know, I dream about playing for Tiff County on that side, too. And um, this past summer, I got the opportunity to uh, go up to Young Harris for a visit and all, and they offered, and right now I'm committed to go play baseball with them after high school. Well, that's good. So, uh, you know, like we said earlier, you are a senior, so you kind of know what, you know, after your days of Tiff County High School, what you're going to do next. Yes, sir. You know, and it's going to go on and, and play, you know, at the college level baseball. Yes, sir. And I watched you play baseball. Uh, you know, I've got a son that plays that's, Couple grades behind you, uh, and folks. If you don't, if you've never seen this kid right here swinging bat, I'm telling you, I, I've been around baseball my whole life. Uh, don't know if I've ever seen a kid hit a ball as hard as you do. Thank you. Uh, I know, you know, I, I know. You just go out there and don't never practice in the cage or nothing like that. Dad's ain't never, oh, dad yeah, ain't never yeah. thrown no baseballs to you. No, I just fought out there one day and yeah, I just started play. swinging. Yes, sir. It, it takes a lot of dedication. Yes, sir, it does. Uh, you know, I, I do know, knowing your family like I do, uh, that you your dad used to coach you. Yes, sir. On back. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, when I was, you know, about seven or eight, we started a travel team. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad, Tom Flick, and a couple others went in, and they were coaching us in travel ball. And we went all over the southeast playing great competition, and I believe that's – was helped me become the baseball player I am today. Yeah, and we did the same thing. Uh, you know, with my son, me and a good friend of mine, uh, we started a team, you know, it formed out of an all-star team. And I think nowadays you've got to do that. You've got to start early. You've got to put in the time to be successful. You know, whether it's offensive guard for the Tiff County football team or it's the first baseman for the Blue Devils, you know, on the diamond. Uh, you've got to put that extra work in, uh, but also you've got to keep your grades up also. Yes, sir. Uh, should we talk about grades or we need to move on? Uh, we can talk about okay. them. That's important. Okay. You know, if you don't make good grades, you're not going to play. Uh, now, is that a daddy rule or is that a – I know uh, it's a high school rule. I but. know it's a high school rule. That's a daddy rule okay. too. Because it uh, is with me too. Yes, that's, sir. That's one thing I tell my son. That's uh, one of the first questions they ask you, you know, when I was getting recruited for baseball. They want to know what your grades is mm -hmm. before – they even really talk about baseball because, you know, you're a student athlete. Right. You're there to get education first. The key word being on student first. Yes, sir. And uh, I've been an honor student all the way through, so it's helped out a lot. Well, good. Good. Um, and that's important because yes, they sir. know now that they can offer you a scholarship. And, uh, you know, they, they really don't have to worry about you, you know, not making the grades. Um and, and, and that's what I tell all young people that I have coached in the past. You know, your grades would take you further than your ability. Yes, sir. Because um, if you don't have the grades, first of all, I don't care how good you are, you know, you, you're not going to get signed. Yes, sir. Uh, that, that's my opinion. Um, but, you know, you uh, 
without the, the grades, you uh, won't have the opportunity to play at the next level. Yes, sir. Uh, so you said you was verbally committed, right? Yes, sir. I'll... When will be your official, which I know you can't sign, Georgia High School rules. Yes, sir. But uh, what if somebody sees you on the football field now? Uh, uh, have you thought that far? Or? I haven't really thought that far. You know, it's, I sign in about a month okay. for early signing. So, so we'll be official. It'll be official pretty soon. So, okay. you know, I think it's pretty much a done deal on the baseball side. But, you know, you never know what might happen. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, so this coming week, we've got, uh, got another home game. Yes, sir. And I noticed uh, last week in Moultrie, uh, looked like Tifton brought a pretty good crowd. Yes, sir, we did. I mean, and from where I sat, the section I was in, uh, they was pretty loud. As a player, how does that feel? I mean, can can I guess my question is when the when the fans are up hollering and screaming. I know when I left, I couldn't talk. Yes, sir. Uh, but how does it make you as a player? I mean, it, it, can you hear them when you're on the field? Or I usually hear them when I'm on the sideline. You know, it got pretty loud when the defense was out there and all. Yeah. But when you personally get out there and start playing, I don't really hear anything. You know, I'm out. just I'm just so zoned into the play and all. But that place was rocking Friday night. It was it was, it was a great atmosphere. And you know, uh, we uh, we got through multi game with not the results we wanted, but I still think you know, like we said earlier, that uh, it was a positive. Yes, sir. Um, but now this Friday night, tell everybody who's coming to town. Got Canham County. You know, everybody's heard about the big, bad Candom County Wildcats. Uh, but, you know, last year played them, went over there to their place and played. And, uh, you know, it, it was like all the the rest of the year. You know, it was kind of one-sided. Yes, sir. But what can Candom County expect this Friday night? They're going to see a different football team than they did last year. Uh, we have a more improved defense. And – the offense, you know, we got pretty much everybody coming back right. from last year's offense. So we've been clicking all year. Uh, it's not going to be the same team they saw last year. Uh, I'm expecting the Cannon had their first loss. What about you? I do too. I do yeah. too. Uh, and that's the thing about you, you know, you got to start believing early in the week. Yes, you sir. Know, I'm sure Saturday morning you was watching film. Yes, sir. You, know, you was already preparing. You know, that, win or lose on Friday night, you can't do anything about it. You know, you got to start the next morning getting ready for the next victim. Yes, sir. Uh, and I'm ready. You know, I would like to encourage everybody as well as you. You know, I think we need to pack the Brody Friday night. I do too. Uh, you know, it's that's one thing. You know, in the past, I've noticed uh, that they we could have some more fan support. Yes, you sir. You know, uh, anybody in Tiff County that is a football fan, I think, needs to be there Friday night cheering y'all on. Yes, sir. Uh, I know you would like to invite all of them to come out. Oh yeah, we need we need everybody out there. I mean, we need all the support we can. Uh, well, that's good. So now you've heard it. Blake wants you out there too. Yes, sir. He's personally inviting you, right? Yes, sir. Um, I see we covered you up to this point. Any, anything else we want to talk about? Any hobbies other than I know with baseball and and football, you know your your time is pretty tied up. But when you're not doing one or the other, is there anything Blake likes to do? You know, I don't do much. Not much? Uh, once I get through playing sports, that's about it with me. Don't have time to do anything else. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we've got a few questions here. We just I'm going to just go down them and uh, pick some out. Uh, all right. On After you get through on Fridays, Friday night playing, Saturday college, who's your team? Georgia Bulldogs. The dogs. They yes, had sir. a scare last night, didn't they? Yeah, I oh, think yes, they were going to pull it out for a while. Well, me and you both. Uh, professional teams? Uh, I usually stick to home state. we got Atlanta Braves and Atlanta Falcons. And Braves is playing playoff series right now with the Dodgers. How do you think the outcome of that's going to be? Uh, you know, we've been pretty banged up lately. Yeah. And uh, But I think we hang in there. I'm worried about the Cardinals. If we uh, make it through this. That's right. That's gonna be a tough series right there. It will be, but hey, let's let's hope we get through there. Yeah. Uh, We're tied one one right now, I believe. That's right. And uh, no, nah, let me. Uh, since you're a senior, you've you've played 
with the traditional uniforms that, you know, and this year Coach Reed decided to spark a little interest, uh, change things up, and I've got how many combinations? Or do we you got have? a bunch. I, I was told that if you played all 15 games that you could have different combination and never use, you know, wear the same one. Yes, sir. So what does the new uniforms have? Are your traditional kind of stick to? I'm kind of putting you on the spot there. I like the new uniforms. Uh, when we uh, – you know, we introduced the new helmets and right. all that. You know, people had some problems because they've always known the T with right. the football shape around it. And, you know, I don't really care about all that. You know, people nowadays, it's all about spicing it up with all the uniforms right. and all. It don't really matter to me. I, I like the new uniforms personally. I do too. Uh, and I'm an old guy. I mean, I, I like the old T. And I was probably one of them before I saw them that was saying, you know, why well, change? But once I seen the new uniforms... You know, I'm, I'm with, I like the new ones with the pitchfork. I like the new design there. Um, but, you know, whatever gets these kids involved in sports, uh, whatever it takes, you know, I'm, I'm for it. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, so, since uh, you told me earlier that you everybody couldn't run fast, um, you're all offensive linemen. If you could play any any position on the, on the football field, where would you play? Uh... I'd probably play quarterback. Quarterback. Because watching them in practice, they got it pretty easy. Got it pretty easy. Yeah. While y'all down there Yeah, we're down there, you know, getting hit every play and sweating. Quarterback's just sitting there, you know, chilled, just handing balls off, throwing it around. Okay. So do you think Wedgeworth would uh, agree with you that they got it pretty easy? Yeah, I think he would. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Favorite food? Pizza. Pizza. Yes, sir. Mine's anything in front of me. You know, it's uh, uh, because you look at me and Randy, he's the one, and you know, we don't turn down no food. Uh, I got two questions left. Uh, first one is, uh, does Coach Reed ever smile? Uh, he smiles after a win. After I've never a win. seen him smile during a game or anything, but you catch me a did. couple smiles after a game if okay. we win. Uh, I did notice after the game Friday night, uh, which, you know, Moultrie is not the easiest place as a fan to get out of. But I did notice y'all went in the, I guess it's the south end zone or south south half of the field. And, uh, you know, I kept looking around, and really the Tiff County fans wasn't trying to get out of there too fast. Yes, sir, they uh, – oh, No, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, they stuck around after the game, you know. I looked at that as, you know, they support us. They, they, were, they were behind us the whole night. That's right. And, um, you know, I just appreciate them having our backs. And you could tell after the game them sticking around because we had a lot of people walk out on us last year. Yeah. You know, games being over pretty quick. Quick. You know. And that's the thing about it, you know, Tifton is a small town. Uh, Probably the smallest community that's played 6A football. You know, student-wise, I think maybe Vidas has got a few less students than we do. But – you know, I think I think the Tifton side will hold about six thousand folks. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, it would be it would be great. Or you tell them how great it would be. To I've see seen it packed. back in '06 when we had our run in the Final Four. You got there early and you didn't get up. Exactly. That place was packed. Exactly. And it'd be nice to see something like that again this year. And uh, I remember '06, and uh, I actually went to the dome that year. Yes, sir. And uh, I was one of them that was up there and. You know, place was packed too. Yes, sir. But that's what we got to get back to. You know, uh, you know, everybody. This, you know, like you said earlier, this is a new team, uh, new spirit about y'all. Uh, so everybody needs to come out and support Friday night kickoff. I think is. I think it's at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yes, sir. I didn't know with Ken was coming so far. What you know, maybe if it was seven thirty, but I believe it is eight o'clock kickoff. All right, the last question I got for you. Uh, Everybody knows Walt Dog. Been on the sideline. He was on the sideline when I was in school, and I'm old and dirt. So, uh, so who would win a race between Walt Dog and Jesse Snow? I have to go with Walt Dog. You on dog Jesse like that? Yeah, I am. I'm Jesse, on. he uh, he ain't the fastest person in the world. No, he's not. Uh, but he's a good-hearted fella. Yes, sir. Uh, he's also one of your fella offensive linemen. Yes, sir. Uh, but Jesse's a senior this year. Uh, how many seniors do you know right off the top of your head is on the thing? We probably got 
There's not many. Yeah, it's about uh, 15 or 15. so. I know. Uh, I, I'm trying to count in my head while you, you're answering the question to the because they've got all y'all's you know, uh, posters up there. Yes, sir. And I want to think there was 14 or 15 up there the last yes, time I counted. Uh, so that means that not only is, is 15 good players leaving, but the program next year ought to be, when y'all leave, you ought to be leaving in pretty good hands. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, those guys behind us, they've seen the way we've practiced, we play, you know, we've tried to set a good example for them. And, you know, I think we're going to head off the reins to them and we're just going to keep right on going. Oh, good. Anything else you want to talk about while we're here? Or? No, sir. No, sir? <laughs> okay. Well, folks, this wraps up another spotlight of Tiff County football. Uh, join us next week as Randy will be back with, or when we host, and we'll, we'll talk about the, what happened with Camden, and we'll talk about the upcoming week. Until then, thank you for joining the Devil's Lear, uh, and go Big Blue. Yes, sir.